why we're here today on the set of Authentically Free at Last. It's a new series from EWTN coming soon. Look for it, but actually it has nothing to do with this bookmark. We're here to talk about a book by Father Carl Schulte, The Life of Sister Marie de Mandat Grance, Mary's House in Ephesus, and our presenters are Aaron Von Uffel and Lorraine Fasaro, and it's a book published by TAM Publications. Great to have you here. Thank, Thank you. you. It's very nice. This is a, a new set for us, not because it's a bookmark set, but, you know, any port in a storm. Here at EW10, we're always very, very busy. And this set happened to be up and available from our new series that people can look forward to. And you two fine ladies came by, and it was a timing issue. And we happy to have you here talking about a wonderful book, Mary's House in Ephesus. Now, you've been here to EWTN before, right? Yes, I've had the privilege of being on with Father Benedict Groeschel and Father Mitch Show. Right. Now, when you were on with, with Father Benedict, you've got a connection to him, Aaron, uh, with uh, Mary's house, right? That's right, yes. Um, Father Benedict had me on to speak about Sister Marie de Mondant Grance and uh, to let everyone know that this uh, wonderful woman who, as a young girl, she was born in a castle in Burgundy, France. She was from a very large family. From the time she was young, she spent most of her time in front of the Blessed Sacrament praying for a vocation. At the age of 20, she became a daughter of charity. She had been born in 1837, the same year that the Blessed Virgin Mary gave the miraculous medal to St. Catherine Labore, and that's in Paris, and that's the mother house of the Daughters of Charity. Right, so there's a direct connection, as you talk about in the book, right, Lorraine, about, uh, about the miraculous medal, in a sense, and this, and then Mary's house, so it's all connected. Yes, through the Daughters of Charity, I would think that that order has been blessed by God to um, bring the Blessed Mother to the world in very, very special and blessed ways, the miraculous medal, and now through Sister Marie, Mary's house. Okay, let, let's talk a little bit about, we're gonna talk about Sister Marie, we're gonna talk about Mary's house in Ephesus. Let's talk a little bit about both of you. How did you get involved, Aaron, with this cause? and with Sister Marie, and how did the two of you get to working together, and how does that tie in to some priest named who wrote this book, uh, Father Carl Schulte? I was living in London at the time uh, that I heard of Sister Marie uh, for the very first time. I met one of her relatives, and she had told me that Sister Marie de Mondant Grance had two popes and four saints in the family, and when she oh, said really? that okay. she was the foundress of Mary's house, I was most interested in Mary's mm -hmm. house because I had heard of it, and I had always wanted to go. So I asked her, well, why isn't Sister Marie a saint? And she said, well, it's such a shame because since she died in 1915, Turkey, where she was working, had so much going on mm -hmm. politically at the time. And then just as they were starting a cause again, World War I came, then World War II. So when they were still looking into it in the 1960s and it just didn't come together, mm -hmm. I could see that God's hand was bringing it forward to our time, and uh, that's when the Holy Spirit really knocked me over. So you and felt inspired to get involved with this. Gave me a mission to, okay. to find and out. And what's the connection then with you, Lorraine? Is it just purely that you two knew each other, or what? Well, we have been friends for a very long while since we were expecting our third sons. Um, and what happened was um, I heard about. Sister Marie when Aaron came home from London and it was just after September 11th and um, <clears throat> my husband survived September 11th um, had just mm -hmm. left Cantor Fitzgerald the top of the tower and um, so when I heard from um, Aaron that Sister Marie is the foundress of Mary's house and that in Mary's house Muslims and Christians pray side by side in peace I, see. I was very overwhelmed and in fact the date that I learned that information happened to be January 19th and as I paused on that, I realized that's the reverse of 9-11. So okay. I thought, here God has um, given us a way to reverse the violence mm -hmm. and the horror of that day through the intercession of Sister Marie. And uh, for me, this is a mission of hope for peace in a post-9-11 world. And from that moment on, I have prayed and worked and um, was blessed to... Uh, assist Father Schulte mm -hmm. through um, a, a couple of revisions of the book, and um, this is this is my this is, comes from my mother's heart. Uh -huh. This is the way to give my children hope. My children who've grown up in a world that knows nothing but terror on television. So this is an, the antithesis. Sister Marie is pointing to this hope. And the way that Father Carl got involved, uh, I had been over in Ephesus. Um, I had 
gotten the prayer t card together while I was in London, mm -hmm. and my spiritual director had told me to print up the prayer and to bring it to everyone in the whole world. So whenever I was anywhere, I would take the prayer cards with me. We have the blessing of the imprimatur of Archbishop Giuseppe Bernardini, which is from the um, Church of Smyrna, mm -hmm. one of the first of the seven churches okay. mentioned in the Book of Revelations. Right, right. And so I would give the prayer cards out to people, and I'd say, just sprinkle them around. Well, let me ask you, what, where did this prayer come from? I actually had the prayer uh, done with my spiritual director. Okay. When he had s said to me that Sister Marie has a very large mission with God mm -hmm. and that we need to gather prayers for her. While I was in London at Our Lady Mount Carmel Church, the two of us sat down on okay. the spot, we wrote the prayer, and that's when he said that I needed to get this to everyone mm -hmm. because this is such a big mission and she is going to hopefully be our intercessor with the Muslims. It's interesting because God had prepared her centuries before the very first uh, person to translate the Quran is her ancestor, the Venerable Pierre of uh, Cluny. Oh, wow, okay. And, um, and that was in 1122. Mm -hmm. Right, and I know on page 160 there's actually a, a very nice picture of Sister uh, right uh, at the House of Mary with a Muslim woman. Mm -hmm. And clearly in here and there, and there is some uh, uh, chapters that actually talk about that relationship. And it's interesting, uh, Lorraine, that because I didn't realize there was any connection at all, obviously, with the Cantor Fitzgerald and, and the 9-11 with this, and I hadn't really seen that, uh, that connection, but but you really feel that there that the timing issue is now in light of maybe what's going on in the world, right? Yeah, I think I was inspired in prayer to uh, at one point to just realize that Sister Maria is she's she's a woman, a saint for our times, mm -hmm. and God gives us saints at different times for different reasons. Mary's house lay hidden for 2,000 years and Sister Marie hidden for 200 right. years, only to be brought now. God is pointing now, right. and, and now is when we need her. Right. Now is when we need her to lead us into Mary's house, which is a symbol of Mary's heart. And it's like a very simple consecration right. creation to Jesus through Mary. You know, you go into right. Mary's house with Sister Marie holding your hand, and she's going to bring the children of God to Jesus through Mary as the world focuses right. on Mary's house because of Sister Marie. Right. Uh, Aaron, let's talk a little bit about Sister. Now, Sister was in France, and then some, you know, Catherine Labore and the Miraculous Medal, and then she ends up in Turkey. How did she end up in Turkey? She had read the book of uh, Anne Catherine Emmerich, who is a German mystic mm -hmm. and stigmatist, and she had the privilege, Anne Catherine Emmerich, of being able to see the past, the present, and the future all at the same time. So in her book that was written and, uh, by the scribe uh, Clemens Brontano, mm -hmm. a German poet, the book became very popular in the 1870s, and Sister Marie was just finishing up an assignment of an or in an orphanage. She was a nurse and a teacher, mm -hmm. And when she read the book, the last few chapters on the, the life of the Blessed Virgin Mary spoke to Mary being in Ephesus with uh, relatives and friends. St. John had brought her there. He had built a house. And Anne Catherine Emmerich gave it with such precise detail, the Holy Spirit inspired Sister Marie to go and find it. And just at mm -hmm. that time, as God would have destined, Pope Leo XIII was calling for French miss missionaries to go and work in Asia Minor, which okay. is our current day Turkey. Okay, and so that's the connection there. Now, the thing that struck me too is that, uh, Lorraine, in, in the book you talk about the fact, or Father talks about the fact that I guess when she wanted to go when she was in Turkey and, and tried to, in a sense, uh, it seemed to me, get some sort of uh, you know, search going for where it might be, there was a lot of resistance, wasn't there? Yes, because the Father Poulin and Father Jung were very scholarly, traditional Vincentian priests who, um, and you know, would laugh off at sometimes mysticism and call it girls' dreams. But as Providence would unfold in this story, they come to believe very deeply and see with their own eyes um, on as they w went to search for the house, they saw they, it was an right. archaeological right. expedition. It was very well documented, right. and uh, they find for themselves Mary's house. Well, you say here I, uh, <clears throat> in the preface, it writes that it's interesting that initially all the Byzantine experts who considered the prospect of looking for Mary's house dismissed the fact that her home could exist in Ephesus at all. 
but it goes on to say almost built into the side of the mountain near the ruins of Ephesus. This was a popular belief among the locals, but there was no hard evidence, right? What happened was the um, Ephesians, who had been handed on the story of seeing a great light coming from the house on August 15th, when they had to flee into the mountains because of the different wars and circumstances, they continued to come back to this home. And that's why the house was so well preserved. They were able to make minor restoration work on it, and they continued to go. So when Sister Marie did find herself in Smyrna and say, how far are we from Ephesus and can we go and can we find this place? People said, oh, well, there's people who already go who are, are from a certain village and they are there every August 15th. Right, so almost in a way, I, I guess, Lorraine, you have kind of uh, local saints uh, from villages and areas of the country. There were people there already who, who felt like this was Mary's house. Absolutely, and when the expedition did, the, the three different expeditions of the initial ones, they used Blessed Anne Catherine Emick's book as a map per se and just followed those last few chapters of her book where she speaks about Mary in Ephesus right. and it was shockingly apparent right. at every step they would look to the left and there would be that view and they would see the spring and they would see the plateaus and they would see the foundation just as God had revealed it to Blessed Anne Catherine mm -hmm. Emmerich. And that was what was placed on Sister Marie's heart when she read it. And then to find herself just 70 kilometers from that spot. Um, and as a woman and a, a nun, she wasn't able to do expedition work. So she had to... She had to enlist help. Exactly. Right, right. Yes. Right. Well, uh, women are highly motivated and great motivators, <laughs> right? As, yeah. as two mothers would know, right? <laughs> well, let me ask you also, Aaron. When they went and, and, and found it, it wasn't like there's, there was just a house sitting there that's been sitting around for 2,000 years, right? Now, had there been a church on it at one time? And there were other artifacts that have been found over the years, right? The uh, apostles had turned the house into a church in the uh, first century. And then another church was built on top of that in the fourth century. When Sister Marie was able, uh, as a daughter of charity, be able to purchase the property uh, for the good of the church and for the uh, God's kingdom, she was able to then start excavation work. And when they were excavating, they found skeletons. And the skeletons were all facing the house. And that's when they really began to take note because at that time, all of the uh, burials would have been facing Jerusalem. And in the hands of the skeletons were medals from the different uh, emperors of the different time periods. And they also found molds that show that it was an early Christian community. And um, the beauty of this is that when you do go to the house, you're not going down into levels and levels uh, uh, from over the centuries. God has preserved this house, just as he preserved the Blessed Virgin Mary through the assumption that the house is up above ground and there's actually a line while you're there that you can see the original stonework, which is exactly the same as what they were finding in the council church at Ephesus in 431, where Mary was declared mother of God. So Sister Marie really was able to see through the archeologists and through the experts that not only was this something that she had thought that they had indeed found, mm -hmm. but they were able to show it in many ways. And that's why many of our popes these days go, and our first pope uh, was able to even bring a chalice in right. Sister Marie's honor. Right, so in fact, I know you mentioned, I think it's even on the, the prayer card that you've created that you talk about all the recent popes have visited from mm -hmm. Paul the Sixth and uh, even Pope Benedict the Sixteenth back in 06 was yes. there, right? Yes. Um, one of my favorite things to tell is what Pope Benedict said there. Um, he, he called on, um, he, he mentions Mary's house as a place uh, venerated also by Muslims and calls on us to offer right. a prayer, prayer of peace for the world at that house. For right. the, and that was after September 11th, right. too. Well, Erin, there's, there's a lot of pictures. You've got pictures <coughs> in the section that has between 1951 and 61 of the actual location that's been restored. And also what's interesting, you've also got pictures in here of where, the, where people built replicas in different places around the world, right? It is amazing. It seems that this is the time for Sister Marie and for the House of Mary. Uh, perhaps it's because most of the pilgrims that go to the House of Mary in Ephesus are the Muslims. 
And I really believe that these replicas are being built in different parts of the world so that the Muslims will also claim these spots as holy places of pilgrimage where all of Mary's children can all come together inside her home and learn to love one another and to live in peace. And I really believe that that is God's way of having Sister Marie mm -hmm. become more well known is through these replicas. Right. Now it's interesting because you mentioned and we talked a little bit about our great friend Father Benedict Rochelle early on and, and he writes uh, in a preface here before the author's preface in the book and he's talking about certain things related to Sister and the fact that popular interest in the House of Mary has grown over the years. But he also mentioned something which I was wondering in reading the book when you talk about Mary's house. He talks about the earlier tradition said that Mary's earthly life came to end in Jerusalem, which he says seems to make sense. In Jerusalem, you can still see the alleged tomb of Mary, in which it is said that she was laid before her assumption into heaven. Of course, we have the dormition, basically, falling asleep. The question, which is really right? We cannot know, but Father Schulte makes a fascinating and convincing case that Mary lived in Ephesus. Should I assume that both of you were convinced that this is the house? Well, I think because the popes themselves go, I follow what the popes are doing. Okay. And also, it's nice to know that when you go there, you can see the, the papal indulgence from Pope John the Twenty Third um, that he gave in 1961, giving plenary indulgence in perpetuum for all pilgrims, and um, Sister Marie also mm -hmm. venerated, uh, you know, at, on plaques as foundress right. by the church. You know, the church calls her foundress. Right, and I think Our Lady will appreciate it whichever place you happen to go to, I'm sure, or just praying in your own, your own home. One of the things that's it's interesting, too, because you've got uh, the two of you who are both from Long Island, mm -hmm. as a Long Islander myself in my past connection. Then you're connected to uh, Father Schulte, who's out in the Midwest. And then you've got the cause coming out of Kansas City. <laughs> Explain that. It's really an act of God, just like he has me be the person to spearhead this whole mission for Sister Marie, pulled out of Long Island, doing something for a French nun. In fact, even when I went to the superiors of the Daughters of Charity, she said that she was surprised someone from New York would be mm -hmm. interested in a, a, a French nun. And at that time, we were no longer calling French fries French fries. They were trying to call them patriotic fries. So mm -hmm. this all goes above and beyond uh, what, what's going on on Earth. However, uh, when God wants something to be done, he can pick very insignificant people to make things happen. In like, fact, he always seems to do that. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, yeah, incapable and, people. Right. And yeah. with uh, Father Carl, he had received one of the prayer cards. He got in right. touch with me. He said, if there's anything I can ever do for you, because I've never heard of Sister Marie, and I... Right, I, that was the thing that was funny in reading it. The fact is that he was like... Out of unaware, nowhere. right? He it's, talks about the fact I'm in this position here, <laughs> yes. being right, being in charge of what uh, prayer card that was given to me had a picture of Mary's house with Sister Marie on it, seeking the beatification of Sister Marie. I was stunned for 12 years. I had served as a provincial director <laughs> of the Daughters of Charity of the Mother of God province in Emmonsville, Indiana. I never heard anyone mention her name. Mm -hmm. And Father Carl is such a holy man. I really, truly believe that the Blessed Mother herself picked him to write the story. I knew that I needed to have a priest, mm -hmm. and uh, we had one priest who was starting a book. Unfortunately, he got very ill, mm -hmm. so when Father Carl got in touch with me, I asked him to please find a priest for me. And when he came back and said that he could not find one, I knew indeed that that was God speaking and saying it was to be him. And he did a magnificent job. The book is mm -hmm. really, truly adventurous, historic, exciting, and, um, and it will lead people to understand not only that Sister Marie lived from 1837 to 1915, but she's alive today mm -hmm. and she's doing so much for so many people. And this is someone that they want to tap into. Right. She I can Father, answer many prayers. Father Carl too steeped it in a beautiful Vincentian spirituality. And Which is what? How would you describe that then? It's charity. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's service. And, um, that's so we think of what? St. Vincent de Paul, really. St. Vincent de Paul, St. Marie de Marillac, right. St. Catherine Labouret, right. um, all the Daughters of Charity. Um, but it, his Vincentian spirituality just shines throughout this book. 
very humble, holy. Well, was this um, the first book he ever wrote then? It is. Yes. It's absolutely yes. his and, first. And, and he's 91. 91, 91 right. years old. And how long did it take him then to write this book? He started with Aaron, with Aaron in 2007. He had the first manuscript done in 2008. Mm -hmm. And then the, the consecutive next three manuscripts um, we worked on for the next year or so. And he did an excellent job. He really did. And to speak to Bishop Finn and uh, the Kansas City St. Joseph Diocese, mm -hmm. uh, he has someone who um, I had, when Pope Benedict was going over to Mary's house, I had been asked to get in touch with the different Americans who should be coming over. Mm -hmm. And there's a Quatman family who started the American Society of <coughs> Ephesus and um, one of the members lives in the St. Joseph, okay. uh, Kansas City Diocese. Mm -hmm. So he brought uh, Bishop Finn back to Ephesus the following year. Mm -hmm. And it was at that time that I had a meeting with Archbishop Franceschini, the uh, current Archbishop of Smyrna, okay. and uh, he speaks Italian. So I asked the bishop to please assist me mm -hmm. with my meeting never having a clue that that was really a holy setup and that God was preparing this bishop mm -hmm. and Franceschini uh, to become friends and uh, for them to know each other. So when it was the time for Archbishop Franceschini to open the cause, because he's in a Muslim country and because he doesn't have the resources, he needed to call upon the aid of a fellow bishop and since we already had started the foundation in America, it made sense mm -hmm. it would be an American bishop. And there's also the Benedictine sisters who have the priory of Our Lady of Ephesus in his diocese. Mm. So he has the sisters. They're building a replica of the house. Oh, okay. The, um, the author, a member of the American Society of Ephesus, all arrows were pointing to this diocese. Mm -hmm. And on January 21st, 2011, the cause indeed was open. Mm. And uh, you can see the Vespers on our website, www. Sister Marie, S I S T E R, sistermarie.com. Okay. And we'll have that on the screen so people can see that as well. It's interesting you, you mentioned, uh, you kind of talk about being guided because he talks about the idea that when Sister Marie was nearly 50 years of age, she felt like one of the Magi who was guided by the stars. Mm -hmm. He traveled east into a Muslim country to serve Jesus uh, in the sick and the suffering. Yes. And, and Father also mentions about the fact that he believes that. Uh, that both of these active Catholic women, speaking of you, uh, have fallen in love with Sister Marie. Have you fallen in love and do you feel guided in a sense that same way like she did, in a sense to push the cause of her and promote Mary's house? I, I, I can say that anyone who prays to Sister Marie right. immediately has a bond to her. Lorraine? And, um, I really feel like she's captivated my heart. I feel like she's my friend. Mm -hmm. And um, she is at helping me to help her. And she keeps opening right. doors and sustaining us as we pray and walk. And it's a, it's a beautiful thing to think of Mary's house. Um, it's called Paniya Kapulu in Turkey, mm -hmm. which means doorway to the Virgin. And I, I just hope that we can help Sister Marie walk God's children through the doorway to the Virgin mm -hmm. and eventually right. to recognizing yeah. Christ. Now you mentioned, Erin, the fact of going there. Now both of you are obviously mothers and I'm sure you have busy lives. How do you find the time to be able to devote the time to this or even travel? Uh, have you been there as well, Lorraine? Yes, I've been there twice and it was a, a very beautiful experience. Um, I can honestly say that Erin uh, and I are steeped in prayer about it. And I can additionally say that if we didn't have the support, generosity, encouragement of our husbands and, and children, family, right? Right, we sure. would not be here. And we have spiritual directors uh, are carefully putting mm -hmm. vocation first, but then God seems to be allowing us mm -hmm. in the midst of that to continue to make steps. Right. And um, I just thank God every day mm -hmm. for my husband and Aaron's right. husband because they they really are the, <laughs> behind this a lot. Right. Have you seen, let me ask both of you, have you seen your involvement with this? How has it played itself out in the spiritual life of your families? Oh, my children have been very touched by Sister Marie. Two have written testimonies. Um, my son Joseph wrote a testimony after Sister Marie obtained a job for him. My daughter Teresa wrote a testimony after a healing she experienced. And um, I think they're excited about it. I think they're excited to see that um, 
there, there, there is a hope. There's a hope for peace. You know, there, there's something you can do when there is darkness. And you can either look at the darkness or you can try and work to bring more light. And they right. like that. Right. Even in the very secular society we live in, especially in the Northeast in many ways. What about you, Erin? Uh, my family uh, sees and hears the testimonies on a regular basis mm -hmm. because uh, whenever there is a healing, it comes uh, straight to me and I talk about it. In fact, um, my own mom had been uh, hearing me say all the different healings. There's mm -hmm. something about this prayer card that is just so mm -hmm. very special. When people pray to Sister Marie, she responds, if she has permission from God, there isn't anything she won't do mm -hmm. for this person who's calling out to her. And when my own father had his foot turn black, my mom called and she said, quick, quick, I, oh, tell me some of the things that I, I should be doing. I'm praying to Sister Marie um, right now. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, mm -hmm. there's something with the contact of this prayer card. And if people do get the book, the, the prayer card is in the book. And they can it. also okay. print it right off of our website, mm -hmm. thesistermarie.com. And I said to her, put the prayer card under the bed sheets, right mm -hmm. down by daddy's feet. Well, the next day she calls me and she says, pink little yeah. sausages. Your daddy's foot is no yeah. longer black and his toes yeah. even look like pink little sausages. So yeah. now, firsthand in my own family, yeah, as well as in the reins, right. we're, we're experiencing it. What is really interesting is that it's not a one-time only deal with Sister Marie. Mm -hmm. A lot of the people who are writing the testimonies, someone who couldn't see and now is seeing, someone who was right. supposed to have heart surgery and now their heart is perfect, right. they're also coming back and saying, well, I also asked her to help me mm -hmm. to sell my house. Mm -hmm. This is a very tough market to sell houses. Right. Right. I have Jewish real estate agents who come and get the prayer cards because they say Sister Marie's the only one selling homes these right. days. Interesting. So What's it's nice. Is it's, it's a relationship you begin with Sister right. Marie. It's not a one-time thing like Ellen was saying. It's a relationship. Right. And the one thing we've got to say just before we go, obviously all of this will be put in as part of the cause, and it's really the church who then examines all the healings and things that go exactly. out it, to yes. make sure which can be verified and which They're can't be. And we have to always completely. leave that up to the Absolutely. To yes, the, to and, the and we only want what God wants. Right, exactly. So we, we follow God's will in all of well, this. Well, we know God always wants uh, the Blessed Mother to be yes. raised up in our lives. Thank you so much, uh, Lorraine. Thank you so much, Erin, for your fine Thank work. You. And Thank hopefully we'll, uh, we'll, we'll sell some books. Okay, oh. great. And Thank pray you to for, Sister Marie. Right. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you for joining us. Talking here about a book by a Reverend Carl G. Schulte entitled The Life of Sister Marie de Mondat Grance and Mary's House in Ephesus. It's published by TAN and is available through the EWTN Religious Catalog. Check it out and check us out next time right here on EWTN's Bookmark. Thanks for joining us.